This chapter is all about taking control over pod scheduling. However, there's one important missing capability. Consider the following scenario. You have a cluster made up of fairly underpowered nodes, but there's one node with a lot of SSD memory. You want it to be reserved for your flagship product, which you need to be blazingly fast. However, many other pods can end up scheduled onto this special node. What you want is a way to prevent all pods, save for the ones running your flagship product, from running on this node. Given what I've taught you in this chapter, there's really no easy way to reserve, for lack of a better word, the SSD node for the flagship product. You could give the flagship pod an affinity for the SSD node and then give all other pods an anti-affinity constraint so that they won't be scheduled to wherever the flagship pod is. But that's a lot of constraints to add. Plus, you're liable to make a mistake or forget to add the constraint if and when you create a new pod down the road. The correct answer to this problem is to use a combination of taints and tolerations. These are the features that I'm going to teach you now. A taint is sort of like a special label which you can add to a node. Once a node has a taint, it repels all pods which don't explicitly tolerate that taint. A pod can specify that it is not repelled by a particular taint by defining a toleration. That's the gist of taints and tolerations, but I think an analogy will make these concepts a little bit more vivid. Pretend that a node is a watering hole in the desert, and pods are animals that roam the desert looking for a drink of water. In the beginning, only a few camels knew about this watering hole. Life was good. But then one day, somebody blabbed. Now, way too many different kinds of animals are coming to the watering hole. The camels are not happy, so they decide to add a bunch of salt to the water. This taints it for the rest of the animals, forcing them to leave. But the camels stick around because they can tolerate salty water. The moral of the story is that you need to keep salt away from devious camels. Duh. A taint is composed of three things, a key, a value, and an effect. A taint's key and value are somewhat analogous to a label's key and value. Kubernetes uses the key and value to identify a particular taint. The taint effect instructs Kubernetes how to schedule or evict pods which do not tolerate the taint. Before we go over the nitty gritty details of taints and tolerations, let's take a look at an example. We're going to reserve a node with SSD memory for our flagship product server. To do this, we're going to need to create a two node cluster on Google Kubernetes engine. So click the create cluster button. Give it the name tainted cluster. US West 1A has been having problems recently, so we're going to use US West 2B instead. Next, choose the latest version of Kubernetes. For this example, we only need two nodes. Now create the cluster. Finally, download the new context to switch queue control to point to the new cluster. Note that we need to explicitly specify the zone where the cluster is because my gcloud defaults to using US West 1A. Now that the cluster has been created and queue control has been configured, let's start by pretending that one of the two nodes has SSD memory, which we want to reserve for our memory intensive flagship product. So what I'm going to do is list out the nodes and their names. Then I'm going to pick the first node and give it the label memory equals SSD. Next, let's add the taint to the node. The purpose of this taint is to repel all pods which do not run the flagship product. Of course, we're not restricted to using reservation as the key and flagship as the value. They're just what I chose for this example. We can use the describe command to confirm the results of our handiwork. Here's a deployment for the company blog servers. We don't want these pods to run on the node with SSD memory. That would be wasteful. Here's the deployment for the flagship product. If you look down at the bottom of the pod spec, you'll see the tolerations section. 
This field is an array of tolerations for various taints. The pod tolerates the taint with the key reservation and the value flagship and the effect no schedule. First, I'm going to create the blog server deployment. Then I'm going to get all pods with the output format wide so that we can see their node. Notice that all three pods got scheduled to the non-SSD node thanks to the taint. Next, let's create the flagship server deployment and see where its pods end up. There, see how one of the flagship pods landed on the non-SSD node? That's not what we wanted. You see, just because the pod has a toleration for the tainted node does not require that the pod is scheduled onto it. Take a look at this second version of the deployment. It uses node affinity to force all flagship pods onto the node with the label memory equals SSD. That fixes the problem. 